Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Son through the Father, whose name is. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We understand that salvation cannot be obtained unless by faith, through grace, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give it freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Grab for me uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse uh, maybe 33. It's Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 33. And we start off like that for a reason. We have to prepare our mind. We have to know that it, it can get real tough for us. All right? Everything that we have to do, we, we can get real tough. But at the end of the day, we, our hope has to be stronger than what we go through. We have to be able to look at the book and believe what it says. All right? We can't be distracted. We can't let anything get us. Even Yahushua, when he, after he was baptized, he was tempted. You know, he was fasting 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness. The devil came up and showed him a, a rock, told him, you know, he could turn that thing into bread right now. He knew he could do it. You know what I'm saying? He had already, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, it's not like something that he, he didn't end up doing. He ended up turning a couple loaves of bread into a loaves of fill, what, 5,000? You know what I mean? So you, you know that he knew that he could do it. He looked at it, he was like, well, I'm out here to fast for the most high God. That wouldn't make no sense for me to turn the rock into bread. All right? That is that ends up going against what I came out here to do. Alright, so you have to fight those type of temptations and get tough. Alright, but that's what we have to do. Alright, well, it's important for us. 18 what? This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18, give me verse uh 33. 18 don't go to 33. Uh-oh. Give me Ezekiel chapter. What's the last verse? 32. Uh, give me Ezekiel chapter 18. Give me verse uh, 30. Give me verse 29. This is Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 29. All right, we got to be able to make sure that we keep our minds and keep our hearts. We don't know what our hearts say unless we got the book. So now we got to now we got to have a book to diagnose what's in our what's in our heart. How we feel. Alright? Can't let none of that stuff distract us. That's why we say anything, any supernatural experience. A lot of times you get people that be like, man, I know I know God. I felt God. God spoke to me. Right? I was at church and I could feel God moving in there. Right? What we gonna do is sit here and argue with people and call, call them liars? You ain't feel no God. You know how I know you ain't feel no God? Because you don't believe the book as it's written. That's what we're going to do is sit there arguing. That don't make no sense. Well, I'm sitting here and argue with you about what you feel. Right? That's where a lot of people go wrong. That's why these, that's why these scientists and atheists can't get through to Christians. Right? They sit here telling you, look, your religion is a myth. And a lot of their religion is a myth. Right? So the, your religion is a myth. There is no God. Here's all the evidence. And they sitting there showing, trying to show them evidence. Because you know what they're telling them? like, the Christians like, man, I really felt something. And the scientists here tell them, no, you ain't feel nothing. How you gonna tell somebody what they felt? They did feel something. A lot of us was in church and we felt stuff. Right? So we gotta get away from that. Even the Christian talking to other people. You know what I'm saying? Tell other Christians. No, you know what I'm saying? It ain't that's magic. Magic is fake. How you gonna tell people magic is fake and they did some darn magic? There ain't no such thing as no tarot card readings. How you gonna say? Somebody just sat in front of me with cards and read my darn future and it happened just like they said it. How you gonna tell somebody they experienced? 
That's why we got, that's why we started off, we say, it don't matter what your experience is. Oh, you felt God? All right. That's cool. What I'm trying to tell you is you don't line up with the book, your butt going to hell. Feeling God and all. You don't know what you darn feeling. I don't doubt that you felt something. I'm trying to tell you the book say this is how it's supposed to feel. This is how it's supposed to look. All right? Give me, uh, this is Ezekiel chapter 18. I want verse 29. Yet says the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Watch how, watch how he tells us about how we're going to feel. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. He's going to judge them by what? Every, how our emotions tell us? Everyone the according, tingle in our spine? Everyone according to his how ways. How I start shaking when I hear the word. Everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Oh, let me hear let me hear about how when the organ play real loud, I gotta jump up and start running around the church. That's how I know he's gonna judge. He gonna judge me by how fast I run in the church. Everyone what? Everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. You gotta make sure your way is right. If your way ain't right before God, it don't matter what you feel. It don't matter what you think. If your way is not right, it don't matter what you feel is in your heart. Your butt is getting moved out the way. This is a good graph from Matthew chapter 7. We're going to get to the law. I appreciate the most high God. We get distracted. A lot of this stuff, you know what I'm saying? You got to all this stuff the devil can duplicate. That's why we start off like that. You got the gift of tongues. The gift of prophecy. Or any supernatural experience. Don't you know all of that the devil can duplicate? And it'll sound right. Right? We have to get to a point where we say, okay, what can't he duplicate? I'll tell you one thing he'll never duplicate. Obedience. Obedience to this book. He never going to have, you know what? Mm, I know how to send somebody to hell. By getting them to the kingdom. That don't even make good sense. It doesn't make sense. You get to the kingdom, you say. That's the one thing he's trying to get you not to do. So I give you, look, I'll tell you what. I give you the job. Right? I'll give you the car. I'll give you the house. Right? You know what? Just to throw something on top of it, I'll give you a supernatural feeling. Right? I mean, you would just feel like God is right there with you. I mean, matter of fact, I even let you talk to who you think is God. I'll say some stuff back sometimes, too. It'll feel good. And the stuff I tell you, that thing, that thing will feel right. Right? But guess what? At the end of the day, you're not going to be obeying the book. So we have to choose what we're going to judge by how I feel, the tingle on my spine, right? I mean, sometimes I just, I mean, my spirit, I mean, I've been to Philip Bible study, but some of my spirit just don't agree. You know what I'm saying? It just, I mean, I just, something about it just, I mean, it just don't, I mean, no, I'm not saying what he's saying ain't true, but I mean, just, I just sometimes, I, I like to be in a place, I mean, when I went to the, my, my only church I like. My spirit agreed when I was in there. As soon as I walked, first day I walked in there. That's the type of superstition we be under. So at the end of your, your spirit agreeing or disagreeing with stuff, now where are you going to tell me it line up with the book? I can take that. You walk in and you just tell me, oh, yeah, so the reason why I didn't come back because the last seven things you said, that thing just ain't lined up. That, I can work with that. i will be like, you know what? You're right. Let me switch. That thing valuable to me. You just saved my soul. You're going to let me up here to teach you stuff wrong? I ain't going to come here saying that. Right? You got to know the book to say that. That's why we sit here and I teach the book. I don't teach I don't teach y'all the book so that I can be right all the time. Lord, I teach you the book so that you can tell me. Correct me. I need a safety net. Right? We all got to be led, led together. I got to lead you as far as I can so y'all sure can pick up the way for all of us. It's Matthew chapter 7. Give me verse, uh, what I want? 23? I want the way is straight, the way, you know what I'm saying, narrow. Mm, 13. 7.13? It's Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. I'll weigh y'all. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because, uh -huh. because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. He said, few there be that find it? Yep. 
What you think? You think it's just gonna be a walk in the park? The word straight, you know what that word means? A lot of people say straight, it's just like no, it's just one way, no, no, no. You know what straight means? Tribulation. You look it up if you don't believe it. You go look it up. The word straight in that verse and see. It means tribulation. That means you're going through some things. And you're going to have to go through them before you get there. Let's get a bit. Let's get back to the law. This uh, is number. This is number chapter uh, number chapter 10. So last week we, we talked a little bit about the Levites. And um, and we spoke, we didn't, we didn't go into great detail, but we spoke a little bit about how the sons of Aaron, let me get the pen. So, you had, the, you had the sons of Aaron who were the priests. I'm just going to make a P right here. You know what I'm saying? Then over, over on top of that, let me bring it down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So, you got, you got the Levites, you know what I'm saying? You got Levi. You know what I'm saying? Who who's at top? So that's the that's the son of uh son of Israel. You know what I'm saying? His name was Levi. And then from Levi, you have a number of tribes. One being Koath. Uh clans. You call them clans. Yeah, that's good. So we'll call them you had a number of clans within within one tribe. Right? So you got Koath. Then from Koath, you have the priests, which is the sons of Aaron. Alright? So the sons of Aaron come here. Alright, then you have uh, was it Gershom and uh, Marari. Marari, right? So you have Gershom and you have Marari as well, right? So all these are Levites. Moses comes right here, right? So Moses is right here. He's the son of Kohathites, right? Son of Amram, huh? Son of Amram. Yeah, but he's in the Kohathite. Right. Yeah, all of them Kohathites. So Moses is right here with him. Remember Moses last week? He did the first sacrifice for the for the tabernacle. Right? He had to make sacrifices to clear Aaron and his sons. So they are the only priests. If somebody gonna do a sacrifice, who is gonna be after the Levites? It's gonna be the sons of Aaron. Right? Moses did the first one, but that ain't Moses' job. Moses was just consecrating Aaron. So Aaron can take it over, right? Because the most high God wasn't gonna touch Aaron directly. He 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 chose Moses. So I deal with Moses directly. What did he tell Moses when he first started? The relationship between Moses and Aaron. What did he tell him? Aaron going to be like your prophet. You going to be said, like God. He said, you going to be like a God to Aaron. And Aaron going to be your mouthpiece. So that's how God already set it up. Like, listen, you going to be the man. So when it comes time to consecrate somebody, who's going to have to do it? Moses. Right? So he, he said Moses to, set, to consecrate uh, Aaron. After that, that makes Aaron and his sons validated to be priests. Right? Who remembers how long they had to stay inside of the tabernacle? Seven? Seven days, seven nights. It didn't say seven nights, so I made that part up. But it did say seven days, right? That after the seven days, they could come out. So they had to be locked up in the tabernacle for seven days. That was part of their consecration. Now, they can make sacrifices. Now, what if you from Gershom? I mean, I'm, I mean, I just see somebody really, really just committed to sin, and they really need this sacrifice. What is this guy from Gershom going to do? Take him there. You better take them to one of the priests. What's wrong with you? Better not approach that altar. Right? Most high God didn't play that. He told him, these, he said, when it comes to the altar, all the Levi, are stra they strangers. Anybody outside of Levi, strangers. If you're not a son of Aaron, you considered a stranger when it comes to that altar. Right? So that's how we set it up. So even though Koath are the, the fathers, Koathites were fathers of Aaron, they still couldn't make sacrifices. So we'll talk about it. I don't know if we'll get to it today, but we'll talk about their, their different responsibilities. But these are all the Levites. You had a priest, and then you have all the different clans within Levi that serve the priest. All right? And we'll talk about some of the responsibilities that the different clans within Levi had. So where are we at? Numbers chapter 10, verse 11. It's Numbers chapter 10, verse 11. And it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, they, and they first took their journey according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Mm -hmm. In the first place when the standard of the camp 
of the children of Judah. You know what I'm saying? It's standard. What was that standard? He said the first place what? Read it again. The first place. In the first place when the standard of the camp of the children of Judah, according to their armies, uh -huh. and over his host was Nashon, the son of Amenadab. You know what that means? Standard? The leader? Ah, uh, the standard. The flag. Uh, oh, the flag. All right? That's something our people, when you look at this stuff, you this gives us our, so when we read this stuff before, it was just like, all right, you know what I'm saying? But now we know it's our history. Now we're looking into what did our people do? How did our people, how, what? You know what we didn't have? We didn't have no statues. Why wouldn't we have statues? We had no image. It told us no image. We wouldn't have had no statues. You see, a lot of these other folks, they would have statues, carrying around statues to let them know this is who we are. Right? Not us. We would have had flags. Right? That's where a lot of these people get it from. Right? That's what we did. We had flags. Right? Because we didn't want to have an image of anybody else. We didn't want to have an image of no man. We're going to talk about it in our history. Right? It's little things. Right? Little things that we have. Aaron, the sons of Aaron, they wore something called the ephod. Later on in our history, we're going to read about how that ephod ended up being it ended up being sin for some of us. Not because the ephod is sin, but how we looked at the ephod. So we, we tried to stay away from things like that. So we just had a flag. All right? It's important for us. We look at this stuff and we kind of gather. So he said, we uh, wherever the standard went, what happened? In the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah, according to their armies. And over his host was Nashon, the son of Amenadab. Uh -huh. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Issachar was Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. So right, right now what it's doing is it's, it's, it's kind of putting together our leaders. Mm -hmm. Right? Who was the first one? Notice that. Watch this. Go mm -hmm. Oh, the first what? Who oh, again? Yeah, uh, after the standard. The first standard? In the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah according to their armies. The children of who? Judah. Notice who went first. Yeah, he told Joshua the same thing. Why did Judah go first? Judah's the lion's well. That's the chosen tribe. Why he go first, though? How he end up being chosen? Well, Reuben was cast out. That's right. We talked about it last week, right? Reuben was cast out. Who else next? Uh, Grab it. Let's read it again. It's good if we read this stuff Reuben, again. It's, this is uh, Genesis chapter 49. Go ahead. Simeon, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, right? That's right. All right. So, yeah, Reuben was cast out. Simeon. What did Simeon do? Simeon wasn't the firstborn. Levi messed up. These are Genesis 40? It's uh, Genesis uh, uh, 49. Oh, yeah. It wasn't. That's all right. It's, it's all right. That's what we're here for. We got we to gotta make sure we keep this stuff in memory. It's our history. A lot of these people, they get to talking, and there's a couple things these people won't talk about in public or at work and all that stuff. What are the couple things these people won't talk about at work and in public? Religion. Religion. What else? Politics. Politics. Right? They don't want to talk about religion, politics. Right? And history. Right? They talk about history, but... All of that, it's the same thing. What's the difference between history, religion, and politics? Really, what's the difference between? Okay, let, I mean, let's just break it down. Let's see. So history is going to tell us what happened in the past, right? Religion is going to give us a worldview or a faith system to believe what? What happened in the past? If you look at it a different way, I mean, they're going to say how the world was created. Okay. So if we believe the world was created, then it's what happened in the past, which makes it what? So now it just comes down to whether I believe the history or not. So let's just say I want to talk about George Washington. That's history. Why? Because I believe it? So that makes it faith. So that means your history is a faith then. So your history is religion. Right? So it's like, what's the difference between these? It's all semantic. It's just stuff that they use to separate, to ostracize something. Right? I don't want to talk about that. This is cool, though. We all accept this, so we're going to call it history. I'm calling myself, my stuff is history. What you talking about? And it's religion. And it's politics. What do you think it is when you got Levite set up, right? And, and they control the law. Right? They talk about the law. They set up as judges over the law. That's not politics? That's politics. What you talking about? 
If you, okay, George Washington, what was he? President. That's not politics? It's all the same thing. So why y'all trying to make it different? Y'all cool talking about history at work. Right? The history of the job. How did y'all get here? Right? My, where I work, they had to get approvals to build their building. Build a brand new building. You know what they who they had to, to get to get their approval from? County, state. Politician. You talk about the history of the uh, of the place I work, right? You're gonna have to talk about politics. And you're gonna believe it when they say it. Well, that's faith then. What you gonna do with it? It's all the same thing. Right? We just can't let these people confuse us. Read our book. Don't sit here and tell me it's religion. Yeah, it's religion. You know what else it is? My history. What else you want to talk about? Oh, you don't believe it. Oh, that's cool. You just don't have no faith. You believe George Washington? All right, you have faith in that. That ain't faith. What you call it? You believe it, don't you? Oh, okay. I'm just trying to make sure. I'm just trying to make sure I understand my head on straight when these people talk. You don't. If you don't. If you trust in the mud what the Most High God say. He'll straighten all this stuff out for you. All this, all this stuff they try. People try to throw at you and confuse you and twist up those semantics. This mean. This word means this and this word. Okay, break it. Just tell me. You tell me what it means. So I can tell you how much all these words is a waste of time. Because they all mean the same thing. <laughs> you killing a whole bunch of... That's why we're not good at this language. <laughs> it's hypocritical language. You got these people... Don't get me started. You got these people that... that what are they called over there? English, right? English people. You go across the... they they from England. They call England. We speak English, right? Theirs is more proper than ours, right? They're going to tell you, oh, I just saw a little bit. A little bit? And it's supposed to be a T right there? <laughs> so when the T stop making the T sound, they the proper ones, though. They're going to tell you they speak English properly. And you're going to tell me the T don't make a T sound? It's a little bit. Oh, please. I ain't look, it's, a hip, it's a completely hypocritical language. Where it came from is a hypocrite. It's made by hypocrites. We learn it, and then they're going to tell us, they're going to get mad at us because we say ain't. Don't have anything to say about what we how we speak your hypocritical language. How? How is that not slang? If you tell me a little bit. It's a little bit. Boy, I, well, I tell them they fake like I created. It's a little. Pronounce the teeth. <laughs> People make me mad because it's unfair. We come here, we learn their language, we got a little country accent. Now we ignorant. They across the way saying a little bit, and they they intelligent. Who made them intelligent? Y'all just as slow as we are. We all running around here being sinners, not paying attention to nothing that's going on in the world. Most I got talking to us, earthquakes, fire, we ain't none of us paying attention. He's shooting down these people, crosses with lightning bolts, ain't nobody paying attention. And only people that are paying attention, we sitting here obeying a book and people discourage us. Trying to discourage these people. I ain't, I ain't let, you can't let these people shake us no more. We got history. We got more history than any people. We got politics. We got more politics. Talking about Trump. Don't talk to me about no darn Trump. All these people are sinners. He got sinners around him. All these sinners all going at him. You got to fire all these people in these offices. They say they're letting the government, admitting that they letting the government shut down. Just because they playing with people's livelihoods. Right? And we all just so desensitized from it. Are you in the military? I think you feel that thing, don't you? You know what I'm saying? But a lot of us just desensitized from because we we so used to just playing these games. Like, oh, yeah, government shut down. We've been hearing about this every couple years for the last, you know what I'm saying, 15 years. Right? We just can say, if, you ain't, if, it don't, if it don't affect you directly, you're just like, oh, whatever. But you got to think about it. That's, that's my brother. That's his livelihood. These people promise him something. These people out here fighting, putting their life on the line, not because they believe in this country. I bet they're going to tell you. But not because they believe in this country. It's because, you know what? When they got out of school, they didn't have a whole lot of money. Right? They have a whole lot of money. They didn't know what they really wanted to be when they grow up. So now it comes down to, what should I do? Guess what's going to happen? Right at the school, guess what type of program you're going to have? ROTC. Right? As soon as you got out of school and you go you go to this, this college summit, right, to look at the college, guess what's going to be posted up right there inside a the little booth? Join the Navy, son. Join the Army. Join the Marines. I mean... I want to go here, but I don't know if I can swing it. 
then my grades got to be right here to get that scholarship. The Army looking at you like, I don't know if you can do it, son. Right? So then you go in, then they indoctrinate you. You just stop me if I'm lying. Right? Then they indoctrinate you. Right? They don't get you all raw, raw, teach you about, you know what I'm saying, what it means to be, you know what I'm saying, what it means to be an American soldier. Right? Then you get into it. So now when you go, because then everybody around you, anything that you're doing, you got to have a mindset, right? So if I'm going in and I got the mindset, I'm about to get killed, or I'm about to fight these people, and I got the mindset, this is all stupid and a scam, how long do you think I'm about to be doing that? So now I'm committed at this point. I already signed paperwork. Am I lying? So I already signed paperwork at this point, right? I got paperwork. I'm committed. I know there's... There, what type of stuff, like, if I just decide, like, mm, no, nah, I don't want to do this no more, what's going to happen to me? Dishonorable discharge. How do I feel? I mean, if I if I get it, I mean, no big deal. It's just They just saying it's dishonorable. But if I want to go get a job, mm, who going to care, right? Oh. That got that. That got that. So now what? So now you're looking at it. Sign the paperwork. It was cool. Then you're like, mm, I really got to get out here. Right? I might really got to get, I really got to wake up. I really got to do all these, I really got to do this stuff. So now you got to have a mindset to go along with it. Right? Now you got to kind of, you you incline now because you know, mm, it's going to be a hard road if I don't follow through. So now you incline to accept what they tell you. That's right for the country. Right? You start repeating that to yourself long enough. They beating it into your head. You, you they, they tiring you out. In my line, they tire your butt out. They work you. Right? And then they drill that into your head. You are defenseless. You accept it. It becomes you. Right? Then you have so many people that go over there. They see something that they can't get out of their head. They see the real. And they have to deal with these opposing thoughts. This is what I was taught in the army. This is what I need to go through. And then this is what I actually see. This is what I actually know. This is what I actually heard my, my sergeant or officer or whoever I report to actually do and say. It contradicts. And these people come home and they go crazy. And guess what? When they get here, guess what they get? Terrible health care. They don't get the paycheck that they're supposed to get. These people going crazy. Right? They at least talk about that on the news. Y'all want to know hear, hear something real fun? Our people go through it all the time. We in the hood getting shot up. You don't think it's the same thing? And we get nothing for it. It's one thing getting a paycheck or supposedly getting a paycheck. Right? It's another thing. I just live here. I get shot at. Shoot back. Right? We had no care as, as kids. No care if somebody lost their life. I would listen to a brother on, on a, a radio show, Twice Talk, right? I would listen to a brother talk. And he was talking about how he, uh, at 15 years old, he caught a charge. And he was just talking about, he was like, we just don't, we had, we had he, he called it scruples, I think. He's like, I had no scruples for people's lives. At 15 years old, I'm shooting, and we were sitting here and laugh and joke about people dying. That's how it was, though. Because you grow up in that mindset. And it's not, what's the mindset? I want to be, okay, how do we use, I mean, if you came, my dad, right? My dad had money. If I walked around, right, in the hood, and I'm like, my dad is rich. How does that look? Is that a good thing or a bad thing in the hood? A bad thing. Am I cool or not in the hood? <laughs> Why? Why is that not cool, my dad being well off? Because it just wasn't, that just wasn't how things go. It's like almost unbelievable. Like, how are you black and you got a well-off dad? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Guess what that does to your mindset? If I got, a, if I say you got the all these advantages, now I look terrible. I feel terrible. For my mindset to keep going where I am, just like the military, right? For the mindset to work, somebody got to drill into my head that America, America, this is for a greater cause, right? So now in the hood, you got to drill into your head. It's better to be broke. It's better for me to get it from the ground and put it together and make it work. Oh, uh, you had it easy. That's different. That's how we thought, because that's the only way to stay sane. You gonna tell me these kids ain't going through PTSD? That's why they do all these drugs. You think you see all these people around? I mean, a lot of kids just follow and do stuff. But this stuff, the root of this stuff is from poverty, from people going through stuff and, and having to deal with things that nobody should have to deal with. And you have a whole, whole society of people you telling you that it's not happening. Ignoring it. Right? Just like the military, PTSD. All right? We just can't let these people push us around and talk to us and tell us whatever they want to tell us. We have to have our history. 
We were all well, listening to the brother talk. <clears throat> Listen to the brother talk. And and they're talking about it. Yeah, we just don't have a culture and all this stuff and all that. Alright. I left a comment on that. I was like, no, nah, we got it. Y'all just ain't had nobody to teach it to you yet. We got it. Alright? Nyoka, one of the hosts, she is on there. She is talking about, no, we got culture. You know what I'm saying? She started talking about like black culture, the music and the swag and all that good stuff. And he is like, he is like, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. He was right. He's like, I understand what you're saying. I'm not trying to say that's not culture. But if you, I, he's like, I travel now. You know what I'm saying? The brother, a remarkable brother. You should watch that interview. It's a remarkable brother. He, 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 he went to jail at 15. I think he got out, you know what I'm saying, like 10 years later. And now he's a real estate investor. Right? And so all he, all he do now is, you know what I'm saying, he invests and sell homes and flip them and all that stuff. So not a real estate agent, a real estate investor. Like, so he putting the money up, buying it and flipping it. So, I mean, a remarkable, smart brother just listening to us talk. It's, it's inspirational. You just listen to him talk. And I'm not inspired either. That thing, don't, it don't, let me tell you, it take a whole lot for somebody to impress me. I'll be like, yeah, I ain't listening to this stuff. You know what I'm saying? You get the gap. But the brother just seemed genuine. And, and what he said, you could tell he speaks with purpose. You know what I'm saying? And just hearing this story, it's just like, man, that's an inspirational thing. You know what I'm saying? That's what we need to see. You know what I'm saying? You could tell just from his words, he's talking about we don't have no culture. He's looking for it. He's like... I go to China. He said, I travel, man. I go to China. China, and these people have been doing the same thing for thousands of years. That's culture. We got thousands of years worth of records right here. That's culture. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to tell it. He's like, no, nah, I know what you're saying, culture. Like, I get it. I know what you're saying. I'm not trying to say that's not culture. I'm talking about culture. Thousands of years back. Let's trace it back. We got that. How you people going to tell us our stuff is religion? That's cool. Call it religion. It's history, too, though. It's my culture too, though. Let's talk about that. What I had you grab? Maria. Hmm? Genesis. It's Genesis chapter forty-nine. Give me verse one. It's our book. It's important for us to know that when the book come, when it come down to it, he gonna turn the hearts of the son back to the fathers, right? So now we gotta know who the fathers are. When Jacob had his twelve sons, we gotta figure out what happened. His oldest son name was what? Reuben. Reuben. Next son was what? Simeon. Simeon. Next son was what? Levi. Levi. Then who? Judah. Then Judah. Let's read about it. It's Genesis chapter 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Mm -hmm. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength. So they, part of our culture, the firstborn, what did we do for him? We gave him the majority of the birthright. I mean, typically that's what we did. You my firstborn, it's going to go to you. Right? No different. My firstborn son. All, all, my, all my intentions right now, give it all to him. Right? That's how it goes. Right? Now he mess up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do like Israel did. Let me see. <laughs> Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength. The, ex the excellency of dignity. Hold on real quick. Uh, boy, you might want to be quiet in there. We have a Bible study. Discussing the future. All right, keep going. <laughs> and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Uh-huh. Unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up into thy father's bed, then defiled thou it. He told him straight up. So he said, look, man, you my excellency. Right? You know what I'm saying? You're beginning of my strength. But guess what? You unstable as darn water. He said, you can't control yourself. You don't have no discipline. He said, he, you went up into my darn bed. Slept with my darn wife. He said, what's wrong with you? He said, you want what? You will not excel. You ain't going nowhere, boy. That's what he told him. Who you, who you think? You thought, you thought that was Israel talking or you thought that was uh, the most high God? That was Israel talking. That's God talking through Israel. I'll prove it to you. Watch. Keep going. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments right. of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou unto their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor. Be not thou, un, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their... Self will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. 
I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. All right? So Reuben, he told the man, nah, you ain't going to excel. Right? He gave to Simeon. He said, you and Levi, man, y'all was harsh. Y'all had wrath. All right? You know what I'm saying? He said, nah, y'all can't do it. Y'all was cruel. All right? So these are his first three sons. All of them, he had criticism, sharp criticism for them. Who remembers what Simeon and Levi did? You all right? Take your time. Who they do it over? Over their sister. Over their sister, right? What did one of the gentlemen do to one of their sisters? Slept with her. Slept with his sister, right? Then after that, he he did what? He wanted to marry her. He's like. He slept with her. He was like, I'm going to make an honest woman out of her. Right? He, it's not like he slept with her. He was like, man, you messing with me. You know what I'm saying? Things were good, but we good. You know what I'm saying? I'm out of here. It was according to the law. Right? He slept with her. He said, you know what? I'm going to make an honest woman out of her. I'm gonna, let me ask your father. Can I have your hand in marriage? They didn't like that, though. They said, you should have did that first. Right? And it was because he, he, was, a, he was a Canaanite. Right? He was an Amorite, rather. All right, you know what I'm saying? Specifically, is a what? A Hittite? Mm, Hivite? No. It was a Hivite or a Hittite? It was one of the Jebusite? No. Nah, it was a, it was a Hivite or a Hittite. 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 It was a Hittite. You know what I'm saying? So he is a Hittite. He is looking at him like, yeah, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? We don't we don't mess with no Hittites. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? We Hebrew boy. We don't mess with no Hittite. You slept with our sister though, huh? Treat treat our sisters like a harlot. So what they did, like, I right, tell y'all what. Everybody gets circumcised. I mean, no, no. Everybody got to get circumcised. Then, uh, you know, uh, you can have our sister, and uh, we can all just, you know, intermarry. They all got circumcised, right? The Hittites, the Hittites they're sitting there, they're like, yeah, I will do it. It was worth it for them. They all got circumcised. As soon as they did, they went in and killed them all. All of them just sitting there injured. Just sitting there, can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? They just went there and slaughtered them all. Jacob didn't like that. He said, that was cruel. He said, he said that thing was cruel. All right? He didn't look at that's not our people. A lot of our people are out here doing wild, vicious stuff now. We can't look at this stuff, even if they kill our enemy. That's what that was, that ends up being our enemy, the Hivites. Even if they even if we see our enemy when um when um what was that a couple years ago, last year maybe, when in Texas. You know what I'm saying? He saw our, all our people getting shot down and killed. Then in Texas, you had that one dude that killed them like three or four cops. You know what I'm saying? And y'all remember that thing? He killed all them cops. Right? And a lot of people they're looking at it like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Stick it to them, this, that, and other. That can't be our attitude. Not at all. Right? That can't be our attitude. Our attitude can never be that just because somebody is doing something against our enemy. You know what I'm saying? If that thing wicked, that thing wicked. That yeah, ain't good. That thing wicked. Jacob ain't stand for that stuff. He's looking at it like, nah, that thing wrong. You think Jacob liked the fact that somebody slept with his daughter and they was a Hivite? I mean, a Hittite? No, he ain't like that. So that stuff was disgusting to him. Like, man, you just defiled my darn daughter. We would never give her in marriage. Right? But he ain't going to look at that and be like, you know what? No, nah, you good for killing them. That's crazy. Yeah, that thing, that thing unlawful. That's not our people. We have to make sure that we keep it in a place where we focus on what's right. We separate all the rest of this stuff and we focus on what's right. Right? Watch what come next. We got Reuben out the way. got Simeon out the way. got Levi out the way. Watch who next. Judah, you are he. Who? Judah, you are he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion. He said, "Your father's children shall bow down before thee." What else? Judah is a lion's whelp. Uh huh. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down and couched, couched as a lion. Mm hmm. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Uh -huh. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, uh -oh. until Shiloh come, and unto him shall be the gathering of the people. Unto him shall be what? Shall the gathering of the people be. All the people going to gather to Judah. So what does it sound like? I mean, usually, remember, what's happening right now is Jacob, he about to die. He's taking one last run at all his sons. And he's giving out what's supposed to be blessings. The first three sons, he had curses for them. He said, Simeon, Levi, y'all going to be scattered throughout the people. Y'all cruel. Reuben, he said, you're not going to excel. 
The first person he had a good blessing for was Judah, and that thing was a heck of a blessing, wasn't it? <laughs> that was the first one. Keep reading, watch. It don't stop there. Binding his foal unto the vine and his donkey's coat unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Mm -hmm. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Mm -hmm. Zebulun shall dwell at the heaven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of we ships. We good on Zebulun. Right. You see Judah. So watch this. This is Numbers chapter seven. And then we left off Numbers chapter ten. We are gonna come back. He talk but, about, he's talking about that wine press. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's Numbers chapter seven. All that testifies to Yahweh Shua. We'll get to it though. But remember, the way we started in Numbers chapter ten, they said you set up that standard. Guess where the standard went first? Judah. So we asked the question, why would Judah go first? Well, I'll tell you why. Reuben messed up, Simeon messed up, Levi messed up. That leaves Judah next to get that blessing. This is Numbers chapter 7. This is why all this stuff, all this stuff makes sense. It's important for us to see it because the book is not going to flat out tell us. Right? It's not made to flat out tell us. What the book does is it gives us the information. What we have to do is study it to learn how God works, right? We see that. We see this is this is somebody daddy who was unimpressed and disappointed by his first three sons. And based off of a dad that obeyed the most high God, who was disappointed in his first three sons, the most high God honored this even to this day. He honored his wishes, even this man, he honored his wishes even to this day. Thousands and thousands of years later. You still got Judah coming out first. I don't know. Something to think about. Right? Something to think about. It's Numbers chapter 7. It's verse 1. Sorry. And it came to pass on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle. Moses did what now? Set up the tabernacle. Okay. And had anointed it and sanctified it and all the instruments thereof. Excuse me. Both the altar and all the vessels thereof. And had anointed them and sanctified them, that the princes of Israel's heads of thy heads of the houses of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes, and were over them that were numbered uh, offered. That were numbered offered. Uh huh. And they brought their offering before the Lord: six covered wagons and twelve oxen, a wagon for two of the princes, and for each one an ox. And they brought them before the tabernacle. All right. So when Moses set up the, and we read that when we finished our Exodus, right? That Moses, remember he read that he reared it up and he did what? Finished the work. The book said he finished the work. So he started it and he finished it, the beginning and the last, right? So he reared it up and he finished the work. So we read that in Exodus. So now it's catching up right here in Numbers. It's kind of picking up from where we left off in Exodus. And it's saying, oh, when he finished all that up, then all the leaders of Israel came and they brought an offering. Right? As, as part of the ceremony of finishing up the, the, the tabernacle. So watch this. All the leaders. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take it of them that they may, that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And you shall give them unto the Levites, to every man according to his service. Mm -hmm. And Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them to the Levites. Mm -hmm. Two wagons and four oxen he gave unto the sons of Gershon according to their service. Mm -hmm. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave to the sons of Merari according to their service. So you remember we talked about the different clans within Levi? You had the Gershonites, you had the Marites, right? So he gave each clan, like here, here you go, All right? Keep going. Under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Mm -hmm. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none. Because, Why he didn't get him none? Because the service of the sanctuary belongs unto them was that they should bear upon their shoulders. All right, so it's kind of getting into their responsibilities. The, the Kohathites, what they were meant to do is carry the, the sanctuary itself, right? So you had the tabernacle. The tabernacle was like everything, right? But then you had the sanctuary, so all the stuff that went inside the tabernacle, that's what they carried. Nobody else can touch that stuff, only the Kohathites, right? Keep going. And the princes offered for dedicating of the altar in the day that it was anointed, 
even the princes offered their offering before the altar. Uh huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, They shall offer their offering, each prince on his day, for the dedicating of the altar. Mm -hmm. And he that offered his offering the first day was Nashon, the son of Amminadab, of the tribe of Judah. Of the what? Tribe of Judah. Who went first again? Judah. Right? So we see this is not an accident. It's not, no, it's not, a, it's not something that's just happening. Judah's going first. And it's all because hundreds of years before what we're reading right now, in Genesis, Jacob said, look, Reuben, you messed up. Simeon, you messed up. Levi, you messed up. Ah, Judah, you're going to be the man. Right? You're going to be the man. So ever since, Judah been going first. Right? Grab uh, Romans for me. Romans chapter 12. It's Romans chapter 12. Uh, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Right? So when, when we were reading in uh in Numbers, the princes were taking offerings, and what were they giving them for? Uh, the service of the tabernacle. For the service of the tabernacle. So when I was reading here in Romans, he said we should present ourselves as what? A living what? Living sacrifice. For what? Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So you see nothing is changing. We all still have to set ourselves and apply ourselves in the same way, right? Nothing is changing. Now our entire bodies, everything that we are, should be a living sacrifice, right? That means that we excuse the things that we want to do, and we then present ourselves as something that God wants us to do, right? And we put his wants before our wants, right? That's necessary for us. Keep going. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. For I say, through the grace through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, mm -hmm. but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. For as we have many members in one body, all and all members have not the same office. So, all members do not have the same office. Right? That's important because think about it. You had the Levites. We were talking about the Levites. In Levi, you had different clans. In different clans, they did different things. Right? The Gershonites, he gave them some of the offerings. The Mor Merites, he gave them some of the offerings. But the Kohathites, he didn't. He said, you know what? Because it was already given to y'all to carry the sanctuary. That's an honor. Right? Y'all had to bear the sanctuary. So he didn't get nothing to them. Right? Everybody, now what if the Kohathites was like, man, we want some of the offering too. Right? They have to check themselves because what we have to do is we have to look at we all part of the same body, different members. Not everybody doing the same thing. Right? Just because you're a woman and you feel like you know you got to, you, you know, I mean, I understand the Bible real well and I speak eloquently. Does that mean you don't get up here and preach? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't care how good you speak. You can be better than me. You can teach better than me. That thing real good. You still got to be the member of the body that the Most High God called you to be. What you going to do? You so smart and you so eloquent that you don't have to do what God told you to do. That's real smart. That thing don't sound smart to me, though. That's real smart for you. That thing don't sound smart to me. It just don't make sense. Right? We have to put ourselves in a position where we trust the Most High God. Where we looking at him. We're intent, focused with his words. Right? Grab a... Um, Grab Numbers chapter 10. Let's go back to 10. Let's try to finish that up. <clears throat> and over the host... Wait, I'm sorry. This is verse 15. Numbers chapter 10, verse 15. Yeah. It's Numbers chapter 10, verse 15. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Issachar was Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. 
And over the host of the tribe of the children of Zebulun was Eliab, the son of Helon. Mm -hmm. And the tabernacle was taken down, and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari set forward, bearing the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And the standard of the camp of Reuben set forward, according to their armies. And over his host was Elizer, the son of Shedeur. Mm -hmm. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Simeon was Shalumiel, the son of Zeroshadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Gad was Eliasaph, the son of Deuel. And the Kohathites set forward, bearing the sanctuary. And the others, and the other did set up the tabernacle against, against they came. You notice how it's an order to what they're doing. If you pay attention, it's an order. You have these tribes go out, and the Gershonites go. And the Gershonites were a clan within the Levi, right? Then you have the next set of tribes go out, right? Then the, uh, the Kohathites go out. Right, which is a tribe within Levi. So you split up every few tribes, and then you put a clan from the Levites in between them. Right, it's an order. Everything that we did was in order. And the standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set forward according to their armies. And over his host was Elishama, the son of Amihud. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Manasseh was Gamaliel, the son of the son of Pedazer. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Abidan, the son of Gideonai. And uh, the standard of the camp of the children of Dan set forward, which was the reward of all the camps throughout their hosts. And over his host was Ahiezer, the son of Amashadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Asher was Pegiel, the son of Okran. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Naphtali was Ahira, the son of Enon. Thus were the journeyings of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. Mm -hmm. And Moses said to Hobab, the son of Reguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, father We are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Mm -hmm. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. Look, watch what Moses tried to tell him. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as you know how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and that you may be to us instead of eyes. Right? So Moses was trying to tell him, he was like, man, come with us. Right? And the, and the man he's talking to, that's, uh, you remember we were talking before we got started about Jethro, right, Moses' father-in-law? That's, that's mother, uh, Moses' brother-in-law. Right? So that's his father-in-law's son. Right? And he talking to him, he was like, yeah, man, come with us. Right? Come on with us. Right? He was like, no, 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 I'm going to go ahead and take it back home. Moses was like, listen, come with us. Because he got a whole people with him. So he's like, look, come with us. Y'all can be here, and you can be for us instead of eyes. In other words, you can be our eyes out here. You know what I'm saying? These people try to mess with us. You can like keep an eye out and help us out a little bit. And I tell you, if you do that, the same blessings that God promised to us, he'll promise to them. Right? Let's see what happens. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as you know how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou may be to us instead of eyes. Mm -hmm. and, he, and it shall be, if you go with us, yea, it shall be that the goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we do unto you. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. Right? That's the key. We're going we're gonna to stop right there, but that's the key. We have to put ourselves in a position to where we move forward no matter what, right? When people are good to us and people are there and they have an opportunity to help us, we let them know. Listen, you help us out. The most I got to do the same good that he, he got promised for me, he'll do it for you, right? We all just got to be walking, working towards the same plan, right? If they choose not to do it, then they choose not to do it. But that can't stop us. We got to keep going. And then we got to keep, you notice what was out in front of them, three, three, uh, uh, three days journey. Three days journey. Three days journey up ahead. What was out there? A resting place. What was it? A resting place. Read it. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days journey in the ark of the covenant, and the Lord went before them in three days journey to search out a resting place for them. Right. So the ark of the covenant was out there three days before. Them. Right. This is what all this is representing. All of it testified the Messiah. We have to make sure that we follow in the Messiah. The Messiah got to be three days before us. Right? He got to be before us. Otherwise, we're not following him. Right? If he's not three days before, who we following? Him? Who we behind? We got to make sure wherever we going, the man is right in front of us. 
Because then we know we had it somewhere. If he all right, I'm going to be all right. We good. If he find the resting place, guess in three days, guess where I'm going to be? Sitting there resting. That's what it's all about for us. Making sure that we have the Messiah in front of us. That we'll follow. That when we go through stuff, we'll stick to it. We'll remain consistent. We don't slip. We don't fall. And if we do, we look and we tell ourselves it'll never happen again. We confess. We move forward. Otherwise, we'll put ourselves in a position where we lose. We get discouraged. We lose consistency. And the most high God is just going to say, okay, you're not in the way. Let me move you out of the way. Right? Your way not straight before me. Right? Your way not narrow. You just go any old way you want to go. And he'll let you do it. Alright? He ain't gonna he ain't gonna spend a whole lot of time. He'll try to talk to you for a minute. Most like God mess around, just let you do it. We're gonna read about it. We ain't gonna get to it this week. But we're gonna read about it. We're gonna see how how some of our brethren, some of our fathers that were in the wilderness, you know what I'm saying, how they kept on testing. And you'll see, he let them do it too. Then you're gonna come back with him. He's gonna be like, you know, this ten times y'all that test me. Right? You look at him and be like, I didn't know you were darn keeping count. He just came back to him, okay, yeah, this is 10 times. They probably ain't even know. 10? What's a 10? It's 10 times y'all testing me. Okay, guess how long y'all gonna be out in this wilderness for? 40 years. 40 years. We'll, we'll read it. We'll catch up on it next week. Any questions? All right, let's pray out.